Throughout my 15 plus years of experience in both the academic world as a peer reviewed researcher and also in entrepreneurship, building and leading sales teams, I've experienced a high degree of success in both fields, but only after having experienced catastrophic failures. Having also literally read hundreds of books on this topic, I've identified the top five that will not only give you the mindset you need to embrace and overcome failure, but that will also give you the concrete tools you need to use failure to start winning in every aspect of your life. I also have three honorable mentions that will help you hone specific areas of your mindset when it comes to failure, so be sure to stick around to the end. And the first book on our list is Go For No by Richard Fenton and Andrea Waltz. This book completely changed my approach to and understanding of failure and right when I needed it most. You see, back in 2013, when I started my direct sales business, the only skills I had were academic ones. I knew how to research, write, and teach, but those skills couldn't be further from the skills you need to succeed in direct sales. My first 68 appointments were a mess, and it's funny, the exact number still sticks out in my mind because I guess that's just how scary the experience was for me. Now, these sales appointments were before the age of Zoom, where now, you know, we can hop on a meeting at any time. No, I, I had to travel to coffee shops and various places to actually meet people and pitch them. And after 68 appointments, I closed a total of two people. That's about a 3% conversion rate. Not good at all. Oh, and one of those people completely disappeared a week later. So you do the math. And that wasn't the end of it. I went through another 80 appointments at a later time and closed, you wanna guess how many? Zero. Needless to say, I eventually did start seeing success, but it was only after tons of little painful adjustments I had to make in my communication style, my attitude, my prospecting, my product knowledge, etc. And this book, although I read it far later in my building process, was extremely influential for me because in it, the authors emphasize how necessary it is to reframe our success goal. Instead of having a goal for the number of yeses we want to get or sales we want to close, we need to instead set a goal for the number of no's or rejections we want to get. Making this small shift can have huge impacts. For example, if you're in business and you're testing ads, you should have a goal to have a certain number of failed or non-converting ads so you can better understand what's not working. Or or if you're a student trying to improve your scores, setting a goal for how many questions you'll get wrong on your practice problems forces you to engage with harder and harder material, ultimately making you better at the regular level of difficulty. The bottom line is that setting goals like this gives us something valuable, data. And the more data we have, the more we can use it to make accurate predictions in the future. And that takes us to our next book on this list, Black Box Thinking by Matthew. Syed. This book was pivotal for me to truly understand why the goal setting method we covered in this previous book is so effective. Syed makes the distinction between learning oriented institutions and failure averse institutions. And although he cites such institutions as the medical system, athletics, and the legal system, an institution can be the situation in which you grew up. In school, were you rewarded for getting good grades and punished for getting bad ones? In your family, were you taught implicitly or explicitly that you couldn't do or achieve something? Well, this is exactly the problem. We've literally been trained and conditioned, one, to see failure as a bad thing, and two, to connect failure with our personal self-worth. But these seem to be uniquely human because the soccer playing robots you see here, they became expert soccer players from scratch. And these robots that can jump and flip, they learned it from scratch too. But how is this even possible? Put simply, it's also from failure, a lot of it repeated again and again, except in machine learning, they don't call it failure, they call it iteration. You see, these machine learning systems can teach us a lot about how to succeed faster by strategically using the power of failure, but we have to understand a little bit more about how they work. Robots such as these operate on what are called neural networks, essentially tons of interconnected synthetic nerve cells that assess an object or behavior, give an estimate of the best action to take, experience 
a failure, and then importantly, they log that failure as a piece of data so they can adjust the action on the following try. They repeat this again and again, but the key is that they do it rapidly and without emotion. They don't possess a cognitive system like ours that tells them after each failure, you're worthless and you'll never succeed, or you're so stupid for making that mistake. And it's precisely because they lack those judgments and self-talk that they coldly go from attempt to attempt until, from not knowing how to even walk at all, they are able to strategically collaborate with other players on the field and perform complex movements in order to score goals. So the point here is that we have to learn how to remove or dampen that self-talk from our success process. And why? Because as we've seen, it is proven to work. But exactly how do we remove or dampen that self-talk? Well, that takes us to our next book on this list, The Mental Toughness Handbook by Damon Zahariades. Removing our negative emotions and negative self-talk from the process of success and learning is easier said than done. In about 2015, I had gotten to a point in my business that I was making life-changing income. It was looking like I would finally be able to pay off all my debts and set my sights on even greater goals, but that was when things took a turn for the worse. Because of my poor communication style, my social awkwardness, my inability to relate to people and other factors, my my team essentially started a mutiny, and one by one, nearly all of them dropped off. And there I was, realizing I had to essentially start from scratch. But how did I eventually bounce back? through the very principles discussed in this book. Throughout the book, Zahariades discusses various practical approaches for shifting our mindset and reframing failure. And for me, I used so many principles he discusses to keep myself moving forward with small adjustments. You see, we are both logical and emotional creatures, and it's often by understanding the success process logically that we can train our emotions to stay grounded. A great recent article by Leanne Fenn on behavioralscientist.org cites the idea of a production function to reinforce the idea that progress is almost never linear, i.e. it almost never follows the pattern of put work in, get results out. Instead, it often follows something more like this step production function. For instance, if you're building a 10 mile bridge, for each mile of the bridge you build, you get no value at all. That is, until you build that 10th mile of the bridge, at which point value production skyrockets all at once. Or the pathway to success could look more like this S curve or this inverted curve. The point is, I developed the kind of mental toughness Zahariades describes in his book by internalizing the fact that I shouldn't expect my progress to be linear, and that this massive failure I experienced was simply a stepping stone on my pathway to success. If you'd personally like free guidance from me on how to navigate your own pathway to success, then grab my life orientation guide in the pinned comment below and send me back your results. Our next book on this list is Grit by Angela Duckworth. When it comes to factors that determine success versus failure, it's not enough to simply listen to amazing testimonials from successful people. As tempting as that is, we need to look at trends in the data. Duckworth's book contains a thorough analysis of one of these factors. Grit, as she defines it, is passion and perseverance toward long-term goals. Naturally, this trait involves the will willingness to fail multiple times, and while her work has been criticized by other researchers for its failure to take into consideration other social factors, the important point here is that grit still seems to have more predictive power than talent when it comes to success outcomes. But what does that mean for all of us? Just persevere more, grind harder, and eventually we'll succeed? Well, it's not that simple. According to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, 95% of businesses fail after five years, and only 5% of those who apply to Ivy League schools are actually accepted. But arguably, all of these businesses and students persevered for years, but still failed. In fact, a recent study published in the Journal of Experimental Psychology Psychology seems to indicate that success is not an inevitable result of repeated failure. But all these counterpoints seem to argue only against a straw man version of the grit concept. If we take a close look at the research on grit, as well as decades of research in what's called self-efficacy theory, it's a safer bet to state the following. While failing at a particular business or project does not ensure you'll succeed 
at that specific business or project in the long term, failing in these areas does give us the skills, knowledge, and abilities that increase the chance that we'll succeed in some aspect related to our goal. So for example, did you fail in your restaurant business? And then did you start two online businesses and fail at those two? Well, as we've discussed with the machine learning examples, you've probably gained far more data than you might be aware of from those failures. And now it's just a matter of being truthful to yourself about what business or project you truly want to invest your wealth of knowledge into. And that brings us to the final book on this list, one that made a life-changing impact on me, and that is Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. This book isn't one for the faint of heart, but I love it because it's so real. It's not a logical argument. It's not a data-driven masterpiece. It's simply Goggins' life, the traumas he went through, both mental and physical, and how he pushed through immense adversity and pain to overcome them. What I took away from this book was exactly the point we see from Duckworth's grit concept. We shouldn't simply blindly persevere and persist toward a goal. We have to have true passion for that goal. How I would phrase it, I would go so far as to say we even have to have love for the goal. Our heart truly has to be in it. You know, I love being logical, but we're human and have emotions and intuitions for a reason. The only way we truly overcome failure and persist despite all the obstacles and noise is by making our love greater than our fear. Back in 2013, when I officially became a peer-reviewed academic author, having written a 300 plus page academic text on value theory, I looked back at what it really took to get there. How did I get past my own negative self-talk of you're just an undergrad you think you know more than people who have PhDs and how did I get past rejection after rejection from so many academic publishers how did I spend 16 hours per day reading researching annotating writing editing all without the promise of a result the only way I can describe it is love and that's how I see Goggin's story here too his pursuit of excellence within the Navy SEALs despite repeated repeated failures was the result of love. His determination to get through an abusive family situation was the result of love. His discipline to get up every morning and make the very best use of each day is the result of love. My honorable mentions on this list echo this idea. The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F by Mark Manson, Mindset by Carol Dweck, and The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday are all books I also recommend reading if you want to find this kind of love for yourself. Because at the end of the day, although machine learning can be programmed to use failure to achieve great things, it's this quality that only we have that allows us to achieve greatness. If you want to keep leveling up your critical thinking to make a massive impact in both your life and the lives of others, then be sure to watch this next video.